Hey guys, welcome back to the Edit Place, and today I'm showing you the top five things that I think that will drastically make your workflow better, speed up your life in DaVinci Resolve, and just get you going in your edits faster. So let's jump right into it. So as content creators, we're oftentimes referencing other people's videos or different movies or basically taking snippets from other videos. And so we download them and we create a bunch of in and out points or cut things up to find the spots that we want. But there's a much easier way in DaVinci Resolve and that's scene auto cut detection. Now before we look at the feature, what we first wanna do is set ourselves up for success. So in my media pool, I'm going to create a new bin and I'm going to call it MKBHD. And I'm going to do that because we're using one of his videos as a reference point. I recently did a video how to make videos like Marquez and basically I can go through and I downloaded one of his Mac Pro videos. And so again, normally you'd go through here and take out the spots that you want. Now up here, I have on my desktop the video file. Now before I drag this into my media pool, uh, I can right click on it and about halfway down I see scene cut detection. Now it's very crucial that you do this before you pull it into your media pool. If I drag it down into here, I won't see this option. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna bring up this window and in the bottom left hand corner, I'm gonna hit auto scene detect. So it's gonna start doing its thing and basically what it's looking for is every time the camera makes a cut and you'll see this purple line that's about a third of the way up and that's DaVinci's confidence line to show yes this is indeed when the camera cuts to a different clip. All the gray bars that fall below it, it's not as confident saying maybe the camera moved, panned, so the background changes, but I don't think it actually cut. And then the higher the green bar is, the more confident it is in that cut. All right, so now it's finished doing its thing and you can see that it has a bunch of different cuts here. I can also see on the right hand side that it looks at each frame, tells you how long each uh, time code is, and so I see it that pulled 75 clips up. Now again, all of these gray bars that fall below the line, I can actually take the playhead to, and for example, this gray bar here, I can hit play, I can watch it back manually, And I can see that it was a YouTuber jump clip. So the scene isn't actually changing, but technically it was a cut, which is why the gray bar is close to that bar, but not over it. Now, depending on what I was trying to do, I could hit the add button right here and it will add in that scene cut detection. Now, once you're satisfied with all of the different scene cuts here, you can hit add cuts to media pool in the bottom right. And then I'll close out of this window. And you can see that it imports all of those different clips uh, into your media pool. Again, in that pre bin that you set up, if you do, if you forget to make this bin, it just goes to your master and then you have to move everything afterwards. Like I said, set yourself up for success, organize your bins first. And so now I can see that uh, if I want this shot of just the Mac Pro, it's just that clip. And so now it makes it so much easier to see the thumbnails and the specific shots I want to take from his video rather than just skimming through the whole thing. And of course, I only want to use a couple seconds worth because, you know, I'm not trying to copyright anyone or steal anyone's uh, footage. But this is pretty cool, again, especially if you're doing like a movie review and you want to pull a scene uh, apart or maybe do a test color grade on someone else's video. This is a pretty cool feature to have. Next up, we're going to be talking about A-Roll. Now, a lot of you Final Cut users will be really happy about this one because DaVinci in their last update, Resolve 16, added the cut page, which is a much simplified version of the edit page, allowing you to kind of chop through things a lot faster, kind of similar to the magnetic timeline of Final Cut. Not exactly there but pretty close. And so we can see here on the edit page, this is what a finalized video essentially looks like. But if I go back to, let's just say, I'll just grab my A-roll real quick. And now if I go to cut, what we get here is up top here, right over my mouse is a overview of the entire timeline. So that way you can get a bird's eye view at everything and quickly scrub um, from any part of your timeline. Now, if I hit play here, you'll also notice that um, the playhead always stays in the middle and the footage is basically passing through it. So what that means is it allows me to make cuts that much faster. Um, so I can, again, bird's eye view start at the beginning here and I can see that I'm not starting talking yet. And right at that moment I am. 
Make another cut right there. Can jog that way. Let's say I made another cut right there. So while the edit page isn't necessarily hard to deal with a roll or long clips like this, having a stationary playhead and your clips moving rather than you constantly having to shuffle around or maybe you wanna jump back and forth between all of your um, timeline very quickly, the cut page is very nice for that. You also have quick access to a lot of different settings. I can turn them on here and I can quickly uh, do all the different camera, the stabilization, uh, make some finer adjustments to uh, speed ramping, things like that. And if I scrub over here, for example, you can quickly go between cutting between your first, second, and so on of video and audio layers. So if you've been using DaVinci for a while and you've kind of just been ignoring the cut page like I did for a while, definitely take a couple hours and just kind of play around with it. You may find that it speeds up your workflow quite a bit. Now the next one I'm really excited for because if you're constantly creating titles over and over again that you reuse in videos and you're frustrated by the lack of videos showing you how to do this, look no further. Now let's say I want to make a quick lower third uh, introducing, you know, the edit place. I'm going to go over here to my titles. I really like the title rise and fade. Um, and this one is basically a fusion clip. Looks like that by default. I can click on it and I can change it to, you know, whatever I want, make text white. An extra little tip that a lot of people don't know is while most editors have these parameters that you can change like color, size, fonts, all that good stuff, um, all of these titles are actually Fusion templates. So, so if I load into the Fusion page here, I can see this title, Command E, I can expand, and if I wanted to go crazy with editing this title, I could do that. I could keyframe things differently. I could make all the characters do things different. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for now. And I just wanna add a glow to it. So I added in a glow node there, fan of blue. Now I simply jump back to my edit page and I can see the change. And if I play it back, I now see that I have a pretty cool title. Now, if I wanted this to be in the front of all my videos, that would be super annoying to do each time because, you know, you waste a lot of time that way. And again, I've seen people who have exported them as MOV files with a transparent background and then they just like Luma key it or something. All that is way more complex than it needs to be. What we're going to use is power bins. Power bins are a bin that is in every single project in a single database. So if you're like me and you create all of your projects within your local database, then all of your power bins will essentially not be synced, but just kind of be in existence there. Now, if you don't see power bins in your own resolve editor, then it's not on by default. Simply go up to view and all the way near the bottom, you'll, you'll see show power bins. Once you turn that on, you'll see a master, and then just like anything else, you can start creating bins. So for example, I have one for my other channel, and so now I'm simply going to, uh, let me resize this first real quick, and now all I do is drag this over into my graphics uh, power bin here, and if I were to create a new project or open a new project, that would be there, and I could simply click on it, and place, lower three, call it whatever you want. And now I can simply drag this into any project I want and I'm going to have it. And obviously I can still change it, it's still fully editable. You can't drag compound clips or fusion clips in there, but you could drag audio that you're always using, uh, a video file, maybe the intro clip you always use or titles and things like that. Now, number four on the list here is audio. Everyone's always asking, how do you get crispy audio uh, for videos? And of course, just like how do you get good camera quality? You need a good camera. You need a good microphone. So that's step one. If you're recording with your phone 10 feet away, you're never really going to make it sound that great. But I'll show you literally like the two or three steps that I use to get clean audio. So I'm going to head over to the Fairlight page. You see my audio right there. And then all I'm going to do is find the track over here on the left. We are on uh, audio channel one, and I'm simply going to go to Fairlight Effects, Dialog Processor, and then change from default to Male VO. That's going to just add a little bit, um, almost like sharpening to the voice. And then I open up my EQ and I bring my highs, go to about there, and my low to mids, right about there. 
You kind of just listen. And to me, that just sounds really crispy. Again, I'm not a huge audio person, so that's really basic, but I found those provide the best results for that crispy sounding voice. If there's a lot of noise in the background, I may add a really slight denoiser, uh, but for the most part, when I'm in a pretty controlled environment like this, I'm good with that. And the final thing here is on the color page. Now, a lot of times, again, for YouTubers and content creators, we're always filming in a similar environment, and therefore, we don't want to be recolor grading our footage each and every single time. We want to make our own LUT, essentially. And in DaVinci Resolve, you can make your own LUT extremely easily. So this is the footage um, from another video. Again, same exact spot as this. And you can see that I've created a LUT right here, and I simply just apply it and I'm good to go. So that way I don't have to go in and make all of these hand corrections each and every time. So how did I do that? Well, obviously the first time I graded it, I made all these nodes, made the changes that I wanted. And then now all I do is I'm going to right click on the thumbnail down here, not the big one in the middle, but the actual icon down here. We're going to do generate 3D LUT. I'm going to do 65 point cube. And then you can really save it wherever you want. If you have an assets folder for now, I'll just put it on the desktop. So now back in Resolve, I'm going to go in the bottom right. I'm going to open up my settings panel. I'm going to go to color management. And then you'll see lookup tables. And right here, you'll see open LUT folder. So I'm going to click that. And it opened up. This is basically a backend folder that holds all of DaVinci's LUTs. And I could simply copy and paste it into here. I already pasted my last one in here, so I'm not going to do it again. And then the last step, make sure you do this or else it won't work. Make sure you hit update lists. And then after about a minute or so of waiting, you'll see this save option pop up. Click save and then you'll close out of it. And now when you go back to your LUTs, uh, in the parent LUT folder, unless you put it in a specific folder, uh, you will see it. Wow, when you add it twice, that really uh, is not good. If I were to uh, reset this footage here and apply it, it looks like all the other videos. Now there's consistency and it's so much easier to use. And I could even go over here, right click and add to favorites. And now it's in my favorites folder. So that way I can access it even faster. So there you guys have it. There's five ways to speed up your workflow and to make your life so much easier inside DaVinci Resolve. Let me know down in the comments below if any of these tips were helpful and if you have any tips of your own. And until then, I'll see you in the next video.